Uh, will he indeed present his case in his four minutes? Thanks very much, uh, Cahill, for allowing me to raise this very important topic. Uh, as the Minister of State will be aware, Analog Devices is one of Limerick's biggest employers and the main European base for the Analog Company, which is headquartered in Massachusetts in the United States. Recently, the American, uh, the American government, the decision of the American government blacklisted um, the uh, Japan, uh, Chinese company, preventing them effectively from purchasing American-made parts and components. Analog makes semiconductors uh, for smartphones produced by that company and is a huge customer. Um, so this decision by the American government to prevent the Chinese company uh, continuing as a customer of analog has created a huge amount of uncertainty and confusion in the region. Um, we are informed that the company has arranged a three-day or perhaps up to five-day shutdown uh, recently. Uh, it is to take place, I understand, in the next week or two. Staff have been taught to take holidays uh, whilst they are not working, uh, and staff who have already used up their holiday time are told they will have to take unpaid leave. This is to prevent Analog from building up an inventory uh, because of the uncertainty that surrounds the whole situation. Now, as I've said, uh, Analog is one of the best employers in the Midwest region. It employs 1,200 people, well-paid jobs, that's 1,200 families. And obviously, if anything happened there, there would be a ripple effect right throughout the economy of the Midwest, uh, because many smaller companies and smaller contractors, etc., depend on the, the business they do with Analog. So, um, as I've said, it would, it would have a devastating impact on the economy of the region. We have done pretty well in recent years, but this would be a massive setback. Now, I raised this matter to bring it to the attention of the government, to bring to the attention of the government what's happening. I want to know, ask the Minister of State if he's aware of the situation. Have any discussions taken place uh, between uh, his department and the company itself, Analog and Limerick? which has refused to issue a statement? Uh, have any discussions taken place with the American authorities or with the uh, enterprise agencies here in this country? And what I really, what the real reason I'm raising this topic this evening is because, as I say, of the anxiety and, and, and distress that this, these developments have caused in the Midwest region. And what I want to ask the minister is, has he anything to say that will reassure the workers uh, whose jobs, who feel uncertain about their jobs into the future. Uh, thank you, Les Carlock, and I want to thank Deputy D for raising, as he rightly pointed out, a very important issue. I'm very well aware of the uh, reports of a planned uh, temporary cessation of operations at the analog devices plant at Rahina Limerick. In fact, I know many employees of the company that work in this, as you rightly pointed out, a really great, a great company with 1,200 or more employees in the region, and of course, as you rightly said, uh, the, the European base. I want to emphasise to Deputy OD that I certainly understand the concerns and uh, in connection with this, and uh, I know very well how important uh, as an employer that analog devices is in the region itself. Can I say to Deputy, the ID Ireland has regular contacts with the company. Um, our understanding in the department remains that this is a short-term measure which has been implemented across Analog's global sites. Um, so that there has been no long-term concerns raised over its Irish operations. Of course, the government would continue to access the wider situation and keep the matter under review. I understand that this measure is being implemented across the company's global sites uh, due to the current uncertainty in the market arising from the tensions in the trading relationship, as you know, between uh, the US and China. And of course, Ireland is not the only country affected by this. While I appreciate the concerns um, um, that have been generated here, particularly in, in the Midwest re region, uh, it would not be appropriate for me to comment or speculate on the operational decision by a commercial identity. Uh, what is clear, however, WD, is that, uh, that trade-related measures taken in other states can have far-reaching effects beyond the, those borders. Uh, consumers, suppliers, third-party third firms, and of course the employees most of all, are all in affected by such scenarios, and that certainly has been the situation with the case in hand that we're talking about now. Ireland's economy, as you know, is, is an outward-facing or export-orientated and reliant very much to a large degree on global FDI. Uh, while that serves us well in terms of employment in our economy, 
It also means that we feel the effects of geopolitical developments from time to time. I think we've all seen effects of that in the Midwest and in, in, in other areas as well. Can I say to you, Deputy, that the, my department and, and as local minister, together with the enterprise agencies, the IDA and Enterprise Ireland, are monitoring the situation quite closely. Um, also, our embassy in Washington um, is monitoring the situation. Uh, it is also assessing the other direct and indirect implications for Irish-based companies that may arise, especially given the broad and complex global value chains that underpin the operation of ICT and telecommunications sector. While I appreciate uh, recent events uh, being, are very concerning, we do need to remember, as you rightly said yourself, um, you know, there is a lot of investment in the region. We know the situation remains fluid, and the government will continue, as I've just said, to follow the developments closely. But it, as you said, moreover, in the Midwest region, um, you know, the, the, the situation is very good. Um, there are many um, high-quality jobs and IDA-supported companies and since 2010. The number of staff at IDA-supported firms in Limerick has increased by 82% to almost 12,000 last year. Um, and, and last year alone, can I say to you, there was over 400, 1,400 gross new jobs created by IDA companies in the region. Uh, recently, we've seen significant investment announcements in other areas and, and many other top companies like Edward Life Science, uh, Regeneron, Stats, Johnson & Johnson. And of course, the overall trend in terms of job creation in Ireland is extremely positive. 2018 was another record year for the state in terms of FDI-driven employment and investment. And uh, we believe this will continue strongly um, in, in the coming year as well. But to say to the Deputy, um, you know, we are very conscious of uh, the situation worldwide and particularly the trade war between the US and China and uh, the situation with Huawei and the US and um, it's something that we are monitoring closely and I know as I said to you the IDA are in close contact with the company in Limerick. Thank you. Uh, Minister, two minutes. The Minister for his reassurance that the IDA are cl in close contact with the company. Uh, there's just a couple of things I want to ask the Minister. He says it's going to be a short term close down. I mean what evidence does he have to support that? Uh, there's a great deal of uncertainty out there. I mean, people, the reality is that people don't know whether, it's going to be a short, whether this is going to be short term or otherwise. Um, I also want to ask the, uh, the, the Minister, uh, does he realise, I mean, he, he cites the figure there that 1,400 jobs net were created last year. That's, I'm sorry, 1,400 jobs gross was created last year. You, know, you have to deduct from that the number of jobs lost which is, I think, in the region of 200, 250. Uh, at one fell swoop, this will wipe out all those gains and do more damage because it'll be, it's 1,200 jobs directly and a great many more that we can't count at the moment. We can't assess indirectly. Can I ask the Minister if um, the Taoiseach, in his recent discussions with President Trump in Shannon, uh, raised the issue uh, of how decisions being taken by his government uh, are affecting investment in our region, which is heavily dependent, as you are well, as you're as well aware as I am, uh, on foreign direct investment, particularly from the United States. In response. Indeed, as you know, US foreign direct investment is really important in Ireland. 70% of investment uh, in, uh, FDI into the country comes from the US. That's how important it is. And we do value all the US investment we have in this country because they imply in the region of nearly 150,000 people. In relation to the Taoiseach, as you know, uh, the, the, the visit was uh, quite a sharp meeting that the Taoiseach had with uh, President Trump. And my understanding is from my own officials that the issue was raised. But obviously, you know, it, it, we, it, it didn't go into it comprehensively. But I want to say to you, and I think you're aware of this yourself as well, you know, remember back in 2008 when the threat of, of Dell jobs uh, was evident in Limerick. And, um, you know, you, you, both yourself and Minister Cochrane at the time travelled to uh, Texas to see what you could do in relation to this. All, this is, I suppose, a totally different situation because it does affect, and I think it's important to point out this, it does affect uh, nearly 15,000 employees worldwide of uh, analogue devices. You know, in relation to trade wars, I think you'll agree with me in relation to this, all trade wars are settled in the end. Uh, it's in the interest of the US, it's in the interest of China to ensure uh, that the, any concerns they have, and uh, we've seen this before, as you know, in Anish, in, in Illumina, in, in Limerick, and uh, it was that special relationship that we had with the US that we were able to lift uh, the, the um, sanctions on Mr. Derry Pasha. 
Uh, and so I know it's totally maybe a different situation in regards to analog devices. Uh, it, this is an IDA company, it's a flagship company. It does make the, the chip uh, devices for uh, Huawei and uh, as, as, as they do for other companies as well. And, uh, but this is a situation, as you know, President Trump signed this executive order on the 15th of May last. But I want to reassure you again um, that as local minister, uh, and you will know this yourself, uh, we are really concerned about developments like this. As I said to you, things that happen on the geopolitical stage affect every country, big or small. It will affect uh, the European Union, it will affect the whole global stage. So a lot of that is, is outside our control. But I think that relationship that they have with the US will stand up to us uh, should uh, a disaster happen. But I don't believe it will. I think this is a short-term measure, and I think uh, you know, we have to look at that as a short-term measure. If the situation Sorry. deteriorates, then it's something no, to be, to be a different matter. Deputy but David at the moment, I can assure you, everything is being done minutes. by the IDA to ensure uh, the, the, the viability Deputy of this Deputy David Conlan, four minutes and four minutes.